I know you're hiding something. Bakugo snarls. I'm not an idiot. Of course, he has to confront you right after dinner. So, of course, he can't just go to sleep and leave it till the morning. I'm not an idiot either, Katsuki, you say. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he crosses his arms, jerking his head toward his mother. If there's nothing wrong, then where's the king? He hasn't he talked to her yet? There's something going on, isn't there? You got to admit, he's smarter than he looks. Listen, Katsuki, you say, I don't care what goes on in your kingdom, but this isn't any of your business. If you were sh really concerned, you would have ended every sentence with an insult. You started to walk away, sweating at the thought of Bakugo. Of all people, to figure out the king is injured, it would be even worse if he found out. Why? You're worried. A hand grabs your arm from behind, gentler than you would have expected. Katsuki sighs. Listen, princess, I'm not saying I know everything. Or that our kingdom is better than yours. I just want to know what you are on your side. That's the real reason we're here anyways. He lets out a grunt, off before you can say anything, immediately stuffing his hand in his pocket. That's the real reason we're here anyways. What's that supposed to mean? It's the middle of the night, Takashi groans. What in the world could they want? You scoffed. It would be awake anyways, Takashi, unless you're dozing off on duty. I would never, he laughs. You both turn the corner to Shoto's room. As the Baka ghost called for you both to appear, you knocked on the door, then hear rustling from inside. Hmm? Shoto mumbles, cracking open the door just enough to reveal his tired state. His hair is sticking up and disheveled, mixed with red and white. He immediately blushes at the sight of you and runs his hand through his hair. Princess, at this time of night? He asks. You gesture to Takashi beside you. Apparently, Queen Mitsuki wants to chat. Something important. Hmm. You walk slightly the rest of the way. Forgive me for calling you at such an hour. Queen Mitsuki whispers, her hand folded in her laps. I went to make sure no one could hear us. The queen eyes Takashi, who stands next to you and Shoto. Are you sure you can trust him? Shoto and you both nod, and Takashi tenses up. The room is dark, dimly lit by a lantern in the corner. Queen Mitsuki sits on her bed, her son in a chair close by, avoiding eye contact. You, Shoto, and Takashi shit across from her. They have their own guard in their corner of the room. My husband is sick, the foreign queen sighs. That's the real reason he's not here. Food poisoning, and we think it's purposely. He's been ill for days after eating fish, even though we've had people eat it before him. Her words get sharper every sentence, dripping with the anger of a wife without her husband. No offense, you say, but what would that have to do with us? She grins. That's the point. Both me and my son have noticed the absence of the king, and she pauses. If you aren't aware, King Toshinori is also Kronansum. Are you saying someone's poisoning the kings? Takashi asks. Queen Mitsuki nods. Exactly so, she says. Tell me, what exactly happened to Endeavor? Sh she snarls at the last word, looking at Shoto, using his father's nickname as if to provoke him. The prince doesn't react, insists in responding. Why should we? The queen looks taken aback. Can't you see? Our kingdom are losing their kings, and the people don't even know it. We are sitting ducks. I am aware. Shoto replies, unwavery. You don't say anything in fear of messing up Shoto's plan. He's up to something. But I want to hear you say it. Your fiancé continues. You are implying an alliance, but you're waiting for either us to suggest it the queen and her son look at each other. Shoto doesn't have to say anything anymore. You both wait. Takashi shifts on his feet, 
mumbling to himself. He's been acting weird ever since we went into this room. You th think, what's wrong with him? Fine, you're correct, the queen sighs. I want us to have an alliance, at least until we find the perpetrator. I want to keep it a secret, though, because I believe there are spies in each of our kingdoms. She goes to explain that after they left, the Bakugo kingdom and the Todoroki kingdom will us dove into communication, a message tied into their ankle. Simple enough, you think. You then go on, telling them what happened with your quirk and the king. They look surprised, but weren't rude about it. Too much to your surprise. Surely you would have recovered by now. Kotsky pipes in. The first thing he said the whole time. Someone is probably tampering with him. So, he's in a coma for much longer. I may be wrong, but just think about it. You leave the room with your guard and Shoto, heading back to sleep with thoughts of a traitor in your mind. Who would do this? Poison the king? Multiple kings? You glance to your side, where Takashi is standing. He's immediately back to normal, choking on a way. What's wrong with him? Why is he acting so interested? You don't want to think about it, but you do. Is Takashi involved with the act of treason? Treason that has penalty for execution. Hey guys, I'm so sorry. Uh, Ethereal will have um, shorter chapters because if you didn't know, I had started putting two chapters into one because of how short they are. But with my schedule changed and I won't be getting home until around six and my recording is at seven, I would kind of not like to have my recordings so long and having to do with editing. So I'm so sorry that these are gonna be shorter. But I hope you guys understand with the schedule change and everything. But I love you all so much. Bye. Mwah.